You can upgrade a Windows 2016 server or 2019 server to Windows Server 2022. Now I've gone ahead and downloaded the 2022 ISO file from the Windows Evaluation Center. And now I'm running setup and I'm going to run an upgrade in place, which means that we don't have to wipe out the hard drive or anything. And if you have any installations for applications, most of them will upgrade. There might be some that don't, but for the most part they will. And here's our option to install the server. You can also click to uh, check the box for I want to help make the installation better. Personally, I don't want to make it better. I just want to install it. I'm just kidding. Of course, I want to make it better. I just don't like Microsoft taking information from me. I've entered the key, and one of the things about this particular key is it has to match the build. Since this is a dev version from Windows Insider, you have to make, make sure that you look up the build key online, and you'll get that from Microsoft. I'm going to choose Data Center. There's also the standard version. Make sure you always choose the desktop experience unless you want to just end up with a PowerShell screen that shows up. This way you get the full Windows GUI. And now we're going to accept... After looking through that, sure. All right, so we can decide to keep everything or nothing. So if we choose to keep nothing, obviously it's just going to format it, but we're going to keep everything. So we have applications. They call them apps here, but they're applications, files, and settings. Applebee's calls them apps, too, for some reason. All right, so we're now choosing to install. And this is what you're going to see on some versions of the installation for Windows Server 2022 as well as Windows 10. This is a new thing. And uh, what, what is flight signing? Okay, well, let's look it up for Microsoft. This is what you get from Microsoft. Just the spinning wheel never actually explains what it is. So I looked it up on a bunch of other sites, and it says it has to do with tying the certificates back to the initial installation, whatever that means. So I'm just going to click Enable because there's no way to really get around it. Unfortunately, a lot of people's computers just crash or the installations crash when they enable it. So it's possible that it may not work for you and it may get stuck on some of these dev builds. Hopefully it'll go forward. If not, there's a lot of people out there trying to troubleshoot it. At this point, you can click on change what to keep if you want to choose to not keep some things. Otherwise, I'm choosing to keep everything. And now let's go ahead and uh, it's going to install the Windows 2022 server. After some time, we see that 2022 has been installed and it's starting up for the first time, creating the new profile. Your computer might reboot a couple of times during the installation. But uh, once it's done, we should see that it's 2022. See, it's asking us to activate. In the lower right-hand corner, you see 2022 Data Center. Now I'm going to click on Activate Windows. And you can't do a lot of things until Windows is activated. If you don't see that box, you can just go down to the Search box and just type in Control Panel. And you can go to the System icon and activate it that way. I'll click on System. And we can see that it's not activated, so I'll click on Change Product Key. Even though I entered the product key just to do the installation, it seems to have a bug in it. And I'll paste in the key. Click Next. Now, if this doesn't work, make sure that you have an IP address, because it's possible that maybe the drivers got messed up during the installation, and you may have to download those and install them from another computer. So I'll click Activate. And Windows is now activated. And let's just double check, make sure that we can get out to the internet okay. That looks good. Of course, the news never looks good. And I just want to make sure that it kept all my programs. So we see Firefox is still there. I didn't have to reinstall it. SQL Server is still there. So it did keep all my applications as well as all my data on my computer during the upgrade. So that worked perfectly. So that is how you upgrade a server from either 2016 or 2019 to Windows Server 2022.